Hey parents, how you doing? I hope you're having a great week. We're now into week three of these video devos, just trying to encourage you for the week and uh, keep up with our Bible reading plan for the year. Well, last week, you know that we looked at Genesis chapter three and what I kind of called maybe the most tragic story in all of scripture. And then you come to chapters four and five in Genesis, and it's almost like the Bible is saying, look, buckle your seatbelt, things are getting worse. You hear the story of Cain and Abel, and you may have heard that story once before where uh, Abel offers a better offering than Cain, and Cain gets jealous and kills Abel. But it really even goes further downhill from there. You see that Cain's line uh, is just corrupt and messed up. He has a son, Lamech, who brags about killing more people than uh, Cain ever did. Well, the good news is, is that uh, Adam and Eve had a third son, Seth. And really something you can point out or pick up from the story is it's really a story of two brothers from here on out. You have Cain that his whole family uh, is pretty messed up. And you have Seth and his line of 10 descendants leading all the way really to Noah uh, is really a godly family. They've, they're not perfect by any means, but... Uh, you even see eventually that the Messiah or Jesus comes from this particular line. Well, what made them different? They came from the same dad, and yet one generation seems to follow God, and God blesses that line, and the line of Cain is not the case there. Well, the difference is probably the choice that Seth made. He made the decision to follow God and to be faithful, and it changed the trajectory of generations to come. See, it only takes one father to really uh, say, I'm going to live for God or I'm going to live for Jesus. Many of you that are watching this video may not say that you grew up in a home that your parents really followed Christ. And so you can make that decision for your family and it can make a huge difference for generations to come. See, the truth is, is that our kids are watching us each and every day. Maybe one of the worst things that you could do for your kids is to attend church maybe every week or every other week and make it a habit in your life, but yet they don't see anything or any evidence of Christ living out in your life on a day-to-day -day basis. They don't see it at home. In a lot of ways, that can confuse them. So this week, my challenge to you is to find time to spend with your kids to talk about what Jesus is doing in your own life. Maybe talk about something that you read in scripture this week. Maybe you need to be the father that chooses to live for Christ no matter what in order to maybe change the trajectory for generations to come, starting with your kids. I hope that you take it to heart, and I hope that we see you again at church this Sunday. Looking forward to it as we look uh, on into Genesis. Take care and see you then. Bye-bye.